Welcome to this wonderful testimony of Watchman Ney. Watchman Ney was born in 9003. He was born into Christian family. Ney came to faith in Christ at the age of 17, and his conversion made him to change his life right away. He broke off his engagement to an unbeliever although some 10 years later they were married after she became a believer in college. Ney was the third child of nine but the first male child. Since Chinese tradition favored sons, relatives despised families with no male children. When Ni's mother was expecting the third child, she prayed to God, earnestly asking for a son and she promised to dedicate this child to God if God would give her the child. Just as Hannah did in the Bible. God then answered her prayer with a baby boy who was Watchman Ne. Ne was named Ne Shu Su but he later changed his name to Watchman Ne, meaning one that sounds the alarm for the people of God. Because he considered himself to be a watchman raised up to sound out a warning call in the dark night. Watchman Ne didn't go to any theological school or Bible institutes. But his deep understanding and wisdom of scriptures came from his intense study of the Bible and from reading books from different men of God. Ne had had an understanding of how to study the Bible effectively. Many of which he mentioned in his book called how to study the Bible. He also read many spiritual books of God's servants throughout church history. In the early days of his ministry, he spent a third of his income on his personal needs, a third on helping others and a third on spiritual books. He had the ability to choose books wisely, to discern and to memorize relevant materials. Spiritual books he had the ability to choose books wisely, to discern and to memorize relevant materials. At the age of 25, Ne hired a property in Shanghai and held services there. The congregation came to be known as the Little Flock. It grew into a nationwide movement, which by 1949 had over 70,000 members in 500 assemblies. As we know that China is one of the nations where there's a lot of Christian persecutions till today, even those years was a lot of Christian persecution. One time Ne was asked to speak at a gathering. He knew that in the crowds were many authorities waiting to arrest him if he speaks about Jesus or church. As he stood to minister, there was a glass of water by him. Suddenly, he threw it down then crushed it with his heel. But the more violently be crushed it, the more the glass spread. Everywhere he put his foot down, glass spread farther. The unbelievers thought he had gone mad. But the believers understood. It was a sermon without words. Sending this message. In attempting to destroy the church, the government has spread it. Those who knew Ne say that he was famous for his dramatic illustrations from the pulpit. Amidst all the communist persecution that happened, they finally arrested Ne. They saw him as a threat because of his large followers. They several times tried to tarnish his name through magazines, or lying about him but that didn't seem to work as more people still followed him. Before his arrest they offered Ne to join this movement which didn't favor the church but Ne turned them down, that's when they cooked lies about him and false evidence and arrested him. What must have hurt Ne the most is that the people who were used to bring all the lies and false evidence against him were people he trained in the little flock. But in all the betrayals and persecution Ne never looked back, he was ready to suffer for Christ. Even before his arrest when he was ministering at Hong Kong. The believers encouraged him not to return to China, but to continue his ministry in Southeast Asia. After much thought and prayer, he decided to go back to China regardless the loaming danger that had awaited him. He said to them, if a mother discovered that her house was on fire, and she herself was outside the house doing the laundry, what would she do? Although she realized the danger, would she not rush into the house? Although I know that my return is fraught with dangers, I know that many brothers and sisters are still inside. How can I not return? 
This reminds of the words of Paul in the book of Acts chapter 21 from verse 10 which says, And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet, named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle, and bound his own hands and feet, and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle, and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we, and they of that place, besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would not be persuaded, we ceased, saying, The will of the Lord be done. So as soon as Ne returned to China it didn't take long before he was arrested. He was arrested in the 1952 in Shanghai and sentenced to 15 years in prison. He was scheduled for release in 1967 after he served his time. But for no concrete reason, he was detailed in prison. Even when his wife passed on he was not given the opportunity to witness the burial of his own wife. Released convicts testified that while other Christian leaders renounced their faith for their freedom, Ney refused to submit under the communist. He instead spent days in his little cell singing hymns and writing every day. Because of the hard labor that prisoners had to do, it affected their health condition. Ney himself, his body got weaker and weaker. They were only permitted to receive or send one letter per month. In his deteriorating condition, he wrote to his sister in Beijing, explaining that even though his health was poor, but the inward joy surpasses everything. In another letter he wrote, I deeply long to return to my relatives and be with them, just as a falling leaf returns to its roots. I am seeking a final resting place. Wu Yuki, who was watchman Nei cellmate, testified of Nei saying, it was the way he lived that had a great influence on me. I didn't become a believer because of what he spoke but because of how he lived. Watchman Nei's character was different. He testified. Some convicts testified that, they decided to also follow Jesus when they saw how Nei refused to renounce his faith in return for his freedom. On the 13th of May in 1972. Nay his condition got worse, arrangements was made to rush him to the prison hospital but he didn't make it, he finally went to his final rest. But while he was being rushed to the hospital he said this words to one of his cellmates who was helping him to arrive well at the hospital, he said, when you get out of here, find Lee. Tell him, I never gave up my belief. I never gave up my trust. I have faith in Jesus Christ. Witness Lee was Nee's friend who preached the gospel together with Nee before Nee got arrested. After the death of Nee they wanted to cook more lies about Nee saying that Nee renounced his faith while he was still in prison. But this lie was exposed when Nee's niece came to collect of Nee's belongings when he had passed on. She found under his pillow a note, written in bold words which reads, Christ is the Son of God. He died as the Redeemer for the sins of mankind, and was raised up from the dead after three days. This is the most important fact in the world I shall die believing in Christ. Indeed Watchman died the death of a faithful martyr. Glory be to Jesus.